We are going to talk about. Roberta we are Flack. going to talk about Roberta Flack for the second. <laughs> so this is another one. Marvin Gaye for the second time. The Meters for a second time. Later on, Al Green for a second time. Lou Reed. This is like two take Charlie right here with all this of is these the sophomore uh, year. We're second doing albums. Right now. Yeah. yeah, sophomore year exactly. So. You know, first time around, first take was first take for yeah. Roberta Flack in, way back in the 60s. And Matt, go ahead and run the numbers. And then after you're done, I'll extend you the opportunity to give us our first take on this album. All right. Okay. So this is number <laughs> in the 1970s. On, mm-hmm. It's not in Rolling Stones list. So yeah. uh, on the 1970s, number 2,193 in the wow. 1970s, mm. okay. number 243 in 1973. And overall, number 15,749. Um, John, before I give my take, you selected this out of the 1,001 albums. Why, do we, why are we revisiting Roberta Flack? Same kind of idea because she's so influential all the way down to obviously the title track on this being sampled. Mm-hmm. Though it's one of the most famous, uh, or not Saps covered, excuse me, covered. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I would say, remember we talked about the difference you know, between what covers are like, right? And do you guys remember that? Co- I think we had that conversation, Matt, with your brother, if I remember. Remember we talked about the two different types yes. of covers there were? Yeah. Do mm-hmm. you want to remind our, or do you want to remind our oh, uh, listeners you, of well, that? You had the, uh, there was the, like, the, the uh, homage. It's, uh, that's not mm-hmm. the right word. It's like the tribute cover, maybe. That's mm-hmm. like, yep. uh, that's, we're just basically doing the same song. We're not trying to reinvent the way it's done or whatever, just to kind of, we like the song and we want to play it. Um, and then I forgot the second one, but the second one is like kind of trying to reinvent it and make yep. it your own and, you know, do yep. something unique with it. I forget the derivative terms, cover, derivative. the derivative cover. Yes. Is, is what okay. we go there. So, so obviously the, the album name, uh, killing me softly, you know, was covered pretty famously mm-hmm. by the Fugees in the nineties on yeah. the score. Um, we'll get to that. I'm sure as we talk about it, but Matt, initial thoughts yep. on this album. So I, I like this album a lot. Um, and I, I, this again, like the, um, like the meters, uh, record. I went back and I listened to our um, our takes on that. Mm. And one of the things that I had said at the time that I had forgotten about that first album was how I wished um, she had built more of her songs. That they kind of a lot of them start off quiet, and, she, and and for a lot of the songs on that last record, uh, the first take record, I didn't feel like that they built enough. Well, here I feel like she's doing that more. Um, I, and, mm-hmm. and so I like this. I would say automatically I like this more than the other one, just based off of. Uh, of that listen because um, she's building here. There's times where I feel like I would like her to do it a little bit more even, um, but she's, she's kind of getting a little bit more in that, in that lane. Um, I think the variety here is pretty good. I was picking a little bit more on variety maybe than the, than the last time um, the last record uh, we covered. Uh, But it, you know, and I have to say this, I don't know if I've ever heard her version of killing me softly because when it came on, uh, the first track, I'm like, man, this sounds like a bossa Nova kind of, you know, guitar, Hmm thing that's going on it was i was taken aback i I, not that i was expecting the fujis with the because the big difference with the fujis and this with fujis is stripped down and it's very heavy on the beats on the beats right it's like plus one although and wyclef that's right (laughs) although it does lauren hill does sing the exact intonations of what roberta flack does which is interesting isn't it yes Mm -hmm. yes and so even the part where she does the at the the, the bridge part where she's just um doing the woes you like just like the 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 no no yeah and the na 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 yeah yeah that's fantastic that that whole that whole sequence there is is phenomenal um so yeah so i'm listening to this going like i don't know if i've ever even heard roberta flax version of this so uh, i found that interesting um but like most of these songs uh you know there's there's stuff that's upbeat there's stuff that's quieter initially uh i'm the girl i was kind of a little lukewarm on or a little negative on but as it just went on i just realized i'm like no there's some really pretty piano parts in here um you know that's like one of those things again that i think that would be great played you can just see people at an empty club like at three in the morning or whatever and there's like two people there and she's kind of just playing something for for her but it's a very personal um you know sad song about waiting i don't care how long it's going to take i'm going to wait for this dude for forever so yeah um, come home jesse jesus yeah well no not jesse that was actually i didn't and i didn't like jesse <laughs> or was that the same was she singing about the same guy yeah was, was she there you go so i Je, and the jesse song was a similar song to that but i thought that the um but i that really didn't do much for me musically i don't know i felt that the uh, i'm the girl was a stronger song but mm. um river was a song that built um that i really liked i really liked the numbers the penultimate and i could use that word again track uh when you smile 
the upbeat. It's very upbeat. It's like Dixieland kind of mm-hmm. like yeah, um, rag old timey time. ragtime mm-hmm. kind of thing going on. I really like that. That kind of came out of nowhere, and it does seem a little out of place here, but it's still such a great song that I don't care. It just really worked. Um, and we got another Leonard Cohen cover. So yeah, yeah. I was like, That's I had to Leonard look that Cohen up again. I, yeah, that very much caught me off guard. I was not yes. expecting a Leonard Cohen cover. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't know it by looking at the title. But when she started singing it, I'm like, that's the because my initial thought is. And if you remember the, for the Leonard Cohen uh, segment that we did when we were talking about that song, that's the song that R.E.M kind of aped a little bit on on a track and up and they actually mm. gave leonard cohen credit for so that song that's what i always think of the rem uh portion of that but uh, i always but, think that the b-side was so long marianne which was the one leonard cohen mm-hmm. song i like so yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. um and so i really suzanne's the long track on this and um it's it's very interesting uh it's it kind of stays in its lane. It doesn't really deviate a whole lot. It's kind of just does, it's a little repetitive, but what they're doing is so good and interesting that I don't care. Um, you know, it's a very, it was a very easy listen. It's got like an electric jazz piano kind of thing going on. Um, but, uh, no, she's got a great voice too, you know, whether she's doing a softer song or one of the, you know, more upbeat songs. So, but this, I, I, I don't know if I listen to this record in first take multiple times, which one's going to, you know, I'm going to like at the end of the day, but my, on one listen, uh, this stands out to me as a, as, as enjoying this more than first take. So I'm giving this definitely a thumbs up. Yeah. I, I felt the same way. I I really like this album too. And what I think my main takeaway with Roberta Flack is, is the strength of her voice and how, how, uh, strong it is but also how smooth it is and she seems right at home mm-hmm. behind behind the piano and she uses that instrument to to much effect to complement her voice um everything else on here like matt said uh all the songs build um i noticed the building a lot more like no tears in the end you you start out with piano and then slowly she adds horns and then the mm-hmm. bass come in and then uh, it picks up the groove even, and then there's backup singers that come in. And so that happens, I think, over and over again on this album and um, to a great effect. Um, I liked River, too. That was a fusion of, I thought, like gospel and some funk and some R&B, um, all, all uh, solidified or anchored by her voice. Um, again, it, for me, it just comes back to her voice in every song and, and how that is the, the strength of, of her um, a contrast in, in covers, right? Uh, Killing Me Softly is pretty much almost very similar in in some sense. They really didn't do much on the Fuji's cover. I mean, that's the one I heard first um, just due to my age. But and then compare that with Suzanne. That's like a that's almost like a hidden Leonard Cohen song. When when you hear it, it doesn't yeah. sound anything like the Leonard Cohen version. And she's trying to make it her own, whether or not it works for you. I mean, she she must like Leonard Cohen because she did that on mm-hmm. on first take also. So yeah. she, he must uh, she must respond to him in some way. Um, and yeah, and then and like Matt, I liked When You Smile as well. I, I appreciated that upbeat tone. A lot of these are songs are, they're not sad or um, or s- slow, but they are kind of softer, smoother type, almost like a jazz type of song. Mm-hmm. Um, and I appreciated that um, she added in an upbeat thing. I think she did that in first take too. I can't remember what song that was, but... Um, yeah, whatever she's doing, she does it well, and I, and I like her albums, so I'm glad we got to uh, listen to her again. Yeah, I um, I liked first take a little bit better than this one. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I but I liked both, and I did like this album. I I know that the knock on Roberta Flack from some folks is that they feel her music's detached, right? Mm. And and I get where it comes from. Um, at, and the first thing I thought after I was done this was I started trying to think of. You know, it's interesting that she covered Leonard Cohen because I actually think she does a little bit of what Leonard Cohen does. She writes these somber love songs. That is her specialty. Mm-hmm. If you remember in first take, there were songs about falling in love with an older man. There was love and loss. There was basically, I know you're not, you know, not good for me, but I'll stay around. But not in like sort of that, you know, Supreme Z type way, you know, where it's like more mm-hmm. in like a, I'm fully aware that this is the case. And I'm fully aware of the pros and cons that you bring to the table, right? And in this one, it goes between losing and lamenting and also being in relationships that are complicated. They're they're very – I think if I remember, Matt, when I was talking about that, when I said the relationships she writes about were 
were adult relationships, more mature relationships than the mm -hmm. average pop song. And I felt that way here too, but she definitely, um, while you know she has strong feelings, the music is at a remove. And I, I know there are some people that it, that drives insane with Roberta Flack, because I know there's different opinions uh, on her and stuff, but she does kind of occupy the same lane that Leonard Cohen does in many ways. Yeah. And I, I know at first, like you think, oh, Leonard Cohen kind of is like the Bob Dylan lane, right? And I, I get it, but she has the same type of feel in her songs. Like I'm yearning for love, but love is always going to be a complicated thing that I'm chasing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and like the complication is going to come from a variety of reasons, right? Not just, you know, I love you, but you don't love me or so in that end, another person who it brought to mind was that uh, Dusty Springfield album, Dusty in Memphis. Mm -hmm. I think this album actually has a lot in common with Dusty Springfield. I actually think Roberta Flack has a lot in common with yeah. that Dusty and Dusty mm -hmm. Springfield album. Now, the difference is that Dusty Springfield is a crooner, right? You know, and and comes from that Motown. -y, you know, she's not from Motown, right? But you know, that was what inspired her. Whereas Roberta Flack, like Matt said, is coming from like a jazz, almost like a jazz tradition. Yeah. I think, I think if I remember correctly, she, she cut her teeth sort of like at open mics and almost like, um, you know, just different things where you'd sing, right? Like in a nightclub type setting. And you can see that a little bit too. Yeah. Definitely. And so, so much of this, like I compared to other stuff, but at the end of the day, I, I thought the songs were very good and I enjoyed the songs lyrically I enjoyed sort of the, the, it's not obtrusive. Um, the production is minimalist as it was on first take. Um, we had another album where the production I thought was a little more minimalist this uh, time too, like in Marvin Gaye, but they're very different singers, right? How Marvin Gaye is evocative and how Roberta Flacker evocative is the difference between commanding the center of the room and commanding attention on the fringes of the room, right? Like that's how I'd describe it. Um, but yeah, I would recommend this one. I also think that this is much like first take as well. This is good mood music. Um, mm -hmm. It's in the right place dusk right you know as it's yeah. moving not like pitch black not the morning uh it, there's a time to listen to this album um and i tried to seek it out at the time and it hit for me because i remembered first take and i said i wonder if it's going to be the same type vibe so yeah i would give this one a recommendation for sure um i would say though that if you're somebody who likes your r&b and your pop music to be upbeat and you know right out in front the vocals and just hitting you over the head uh this roberta flack's not gonna be for you you know even even the song you think you know by her as the fujis did it the fujis took the approach and did make it more up front right with the almost the hip-hop sensibility mm -hmm. and the production is uh, like the roberta flack you know vi turns it down right and so if you're looking for that sound you're not going to find it here no um, I would also say I was just looking at my notes here. I, um, Conversation, love. I would say that that's that's probably the other song that I wasn't as much a, as into that and Jesse. Yeah. Um, and and one of the things I had on there, on written on here, was uh, that it sounds dated with the or orchestration and production. So if you want to, mm -hmm. you know, that's like that another you know song to go to to, for, to to hear like what I'm talking about sometimes with that is certainly that that seemed to fall into that category. Well, but, that. That yeah. almost goes back to like a '60s sound, the orchestration yeah. on that, you know, the the, the some dated of the sound, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. like what you'd hear on like the the Motown tracks with all the strings, or mm -hmm. you know what Phil Spector was doing even earlier than that. I mean that that's where that sound kind of harkens back to. Some, it's, yeah, sometimes it's not they a kinda, '70s sound. Sometimes they kind of meld together a little bit. There's there's a little bit of overlap um, at times. Um, you know, for me with some of that stuff, but yeah, like sometimes, and I would say sometimes with the sixties, if I feel like it's overly like got the sixties production or sound as well, sometimes that's a little bit of a turnoff. And I think it's interesting. I mean, if we get to the nineties or eighties and nineties, where that's when I grew up and I'm more familiar with that, there's certainly things in the seven in the eighties and nineties that you could, that sound dated, right. That sound, oh, like, absolutely. Oh, that, sound, that sounds, <laughs> you hear it. You're like, that's an eighties song or that's a nineties song. But well, that me, like late nineties, like, you know, was not was, you know, everything Don was did, right? That producer, like that sounds of yeah, another just, Or just world. even just yeah. basic generic 90s alt rock, you know, um, but I, it's, but I, I am New Jack Swing. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. But I'm much more forgiving of that stuff because that was of my time. And I think I, I, it's, it's just, it's just the area that I grew up in. So I think like if you're from the sixties or seventies, that stuff might not, you might go like, yeah, that's awesome. I love that sound, you know? Um, so, uh, it's, 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 it's probably more of that, but, um, but yeah, even though the two songs that I really didn't like tracks two and six, um, it, the, the other stuff was just very good. And, um, yeah, thumbs up. She's good. She should be higher than two, what is it? 2000. That was, yeah, that seems sure, ridiculous. Yeah. 2,193. She just yeah. barely clack cracks the top 2,200 of the decade. So her and Tom um, Rugg can, can switch places. Yeah. They just, <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 and it is, uh, Nina Simone's second, I'm uh, not sorry. Nina Simone. I'm thinking Roberta Flack's second. <laughs> she does have a Nina record. Simone type of vibe to her. Yeah, she does. We talked about her before. Well, so I think that was in my head. Sort of, but like sort Nina of, Simone, but, the, I wouldn't say is dispassionate at times, you know, so it's no, always I, I think I meant in terms of voice, maybe strength. Of yes. Voice. Yes. Yeah. Agreed on because she's classically trained and so is Nina Simone. So, yeah. I mean, that's Roberta Flack. I remember in the bio we did before she's, that's her thing. She's classically trained. She's got her chops. And I think that's why some people felt she was cold, right? Because mm -hmm. she's, you know, clinical in some ways, but I, mm -hmm. it's never come through to me. I've always enjoyed it. So, 